A question I hear often from people starting a nonprofit is, how many programs should you have? If you have lots of ideas for many different programs, should you execute them all under one nonprofit umbrella? And how do you know which program idea is the best fit for your organization? We're gonna talk about those questions and their answers in this video. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber Melanie Smith and I'm a nonprofit founder and executive director who makes these videos here on YouTube all about social impact, starting a nonprofit, social enterprise, socially conscious businesses, and more. As always, I hope that you find this video is helpful to you in some way on your own social impact journey. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also, be sure to check out my website, foundertofulltime.com, where I have some resources, a new blog, and online trainings where you can learn all about how to start a nonprofit and develop a sustainable fundraising strategy. All right, tell me if this is you. You're starting or growing a nonprofit and you just have so many different ideas for all the different ways you can make an impact through different programs and projects. But how do you know how many of your ideas can translate to effective programs or projects and which ones you should do and should they be separate programs and all these questions about programs, right? So let's think through this together. I think to really answer this question, we first have to get our terminology straight, right? So you've got programs and you've got activities and you've got events and they are not all one and the same, though they can go together in different ways. Uh, so let's define what a program actually is. A program is defined as an ongoing, structured and organized set of activities or initiatives that are all aligned with the nonprofit's mission and the strategies to achieve that mission. For example, let's say a nonprofit that has a mission of decreasing unemployment hosts a series of uh, resume building workshops. The series of workshops, though they are separate events, would all be part of the program of the nonprofit because they directly impact strategically the mission of that nonprofit. Now, if that same nonprofit with that mission of decreasing unemployment hosted a random community luncheon for business leaders, that might have other goals, but it's not a program of the nonprofit. That's a totally separate event that is not directly connected to meeting the strategic goals of that organization's mission. So to summarize, a nonprofit program is really called a program if it has four elements. Uh, it's aligned with the nonprofit's ongoing social mission. It has specific goals outlined. For example, 100 people have great looking resumes because of the resume workshop. So that's a specific concrete programmatic goal that will emerge from the program of that nonprofit example that we talked about. Um, it's ongoing, so that's number three. And the fourth is that it has resources devoted to it. That's uh, board or staff time, depending on if you have staff for your organization, volunteer time might also be in there, uh, funding dollars, um, some part of your nonprofit's budget is allocated to the successful uh, execution of the program. So which program do you do if you're starting up, when you're starting with a new nonprofit? If you have lots of different program ideas, should you conduct them all under one nonprofit? Should you um, just pick one of them? And how would you know which program idea is the best fit for your nonprofit at that phase of its existence? Let's talk really quick about the question of conducting multiple programs when you're starting out versus just one. Uh, there's something to be said about just choosing one when you're starting out. You might be really excited about lots of ideas, but what I like to tell myself when I have lots of ideas but not enough time to achieve them all is, you're just not gonna do all of these ideas right now, Amber. You're just gonna start with one and you can always do the others later. You might have the thought that if you have lots of different programs that you might be able to reach lots of different people and lots of different donors with interest in each of these different programs. But my experience is that being spread too thin actually has the opposite effect. If you want to grow as quickly as possible as a new nonprofit, then focusing on one program, one really, really solid, strong program is your best bet. 
And there are lots of reasons why that we'll talk about. Let's take this example of a nonprofit that I'm familiar with called the Green Chair Project. This is a nonprofit that very specifically takes in gently used furniture, fixes it up, and then places it in the homes of people finding new homes after a disaster, crisis, or experiencing homelessness. So it's very, very specific. Furniture in, furniture out, people with new homes helped who were previously in some kind of crisis. Helps the environment, helps people experiencing homelessness, everyone wins. Um, the narrowness of this mission and the program that they use to execute on this mission has allowed this organization to grow into a multi-million dollar budget nonprofit within about a decade. Um, that's great. They're able to help thousands of people as a result of this focus and this growth over that period of time. Now, why does this work? Well, one, when you are just starting out, you are in a game of capturing people's very limited attention spans and encouraging them and convincing them to support your cause. So having a very narrow focus and one that you can easily explain does a couple of things. One, people don't support a cause if they don't understand it. So if your mission statement is confusing or your programs feel convoluted or too complex, you might not get the same level of donations as you would if it's very simple. Furniture in, furniture out, people helped, etc. right? So the simplicity there. The second reason that a one program strategy is a great fit for a starting nonprofit is because simply you only have so much time in the day and so does your board leadership and if you have staff or your volunteers. They all just have a certain amount of time. So it's better to pull all of the time and resources you have into making one program really, really, really amazing and stand out and impactful than to try to spread yourself thin by executing on two, three, or 10 different programs. So let's say I've sold you, I'm just picking one program to start out with. How do you know which of your program ideas is the one you should start with? Uh, you want to go with your strongest, most effective and impactful program idea. And there are a couple ways to know which one that is. The first step is getting very clear on who your target audience that you're gonna be serving, uh, or at least who you're gonna be serving first under this first program is. This can be a specific group of people like single moms or single dads, um, or it can be, you know, depending on your organization's mission, animals, the environment, etc. but being specific about the target population, who they are, where they live, so your geographic scope and all of that. Once you're clear on who your target population is for your program idea, uh, you want to really, really, really take the time to understand what the biggest unmet needs of that target population may be. So they might have a lot of different needs, but there might also be other nonprofits or organizations or services in your geographic service area that might already be meeting some or all of those needs or doing it pretty effectively. But that doesn't mean there aren't gaps. So you wanna learn where are the gaps? What are things that are not being done yet needs that are not being met. And I talk a lot about this when I share uh, Brianna's story in one of my recent videos where I talk about how to know what your community needs. So be sure to check that out too for some additional in information on how you'd go about figuring out the unmet needs of your target population. It helps if you always keep your ultimate end goal in mind, which is what does the world look like if you have succeeded in your organization's mission? So something like our nonprofit envisions a city in which all single mothers get the support they need to avoid or escape homelessness. That's a really inspiring mission. So it comes with a big question, which is what is the one thing that if you focused most on that one thing, you'd have the biggest likely impact on single moms at risk of homelessness? What's that one thing you can do that's not yet being done uh, by someone else. Author James Clear talks about this very concept in his book, Atomic Habits. He calls it a keystone goal. It's the one thing that if you did it, it would have a domino effect on all the other things that need to get done and 
basically rising tide lift all boats sort of mentality, right? So in the context of this video, let's think of the keystone goal as the goal of the best choice of program you can choose when you're starting out. So continuing with our example, let's say that through your research and conversations with single mothers at risk of homelessness, you discovered that their biggest unmet need was actually emergency rental assistance. That's what you could focus your program on then. You would then have a goal of a program that helps as many single mothers as possible with emergency rental assistance. That would be your keystone program, so to speak. So as you're brainstorming all of your program ideas and thinking through some of these things that we're talking about, I want you to keep uh, the next handful of questions that I'm gonna share in mind as you're deciding ultimately which program you're gonna start with or focus on next because this scenario could also be helpful if you're a nonprofit who has already done some programming and you wanna expand and you're thinking, well, what do we do next? The questions I'm gonna share are dropped into three different categories and that's need, impact, and feasibility. Let's talk through the questions you need to think about for need first. And by need, I mean community need. So the three questions you wanna think through that we've kind of alluded to already, but I will just summarize for you. The first is, is there a need for this program? The second kind of a more specific variation of that question is, is the creation of this program a direct response to the stated needs of your target population? So did the people that you're trying to help actually tell you, I need this service, I need this program? And third, are there other nonprofits in your service area who are already offering this program very effectively? Um, and if not, what are their gaps? And if so, are there things that you might do to complement their uh, programming or perhaps that is a good indication that you should try a different program instead because the need is already being met somewhere else. Let's talk about the second set of questions now which cover the likelihood of your program idea making an impact, which of course is our top goal here in nonprofit land. Question number one to think about in this realm is how do we know the program will make an impact? What evidence do we have? How will we measure the success? Um, Question number two is, do we have a pilot test or some kind of proof of concept, even a really small scale test of some element of this program to show its promise, to show it can work? Um, third is, are there similar programs that have already successfully been done in other communities outside of our service area? Maybe it's communities that are similar to yours, like a similar city size or makeup. Are there similar programs that have already been done that prove that an idea like this can work? And fourth, who might we be able to talk to to learn about some of the specific challenges that we might face regarding this program? And the third category of questions is program feasibility because of course it might have a lot of promise to make an impact, but if your team doesn't have the capacity to pull it off, then you might not be able to do the program. So in terms of feasibility, your big question is, of course, is this program feasible for us to take on as an organization at this time? And some of the ways you would know if that's true or not include what equipment, staffing, marketing, or other resources would you need to be able to successfully pull off this program? Um, third, where will the funds come from to cover the costs of this new program? It's really smart to think about who your potential funding partners, funders, grantors, donors, corporate sponsors, etc., would be before you've even launched the program because you've got to know that you can pay for it. You don't want to get started and then incur all these expenses that you can't cover. And fourth, does your team currently have the time, capacity, and skill needed to launch and grow this program successfully? Do you have all the talent and expertise you need to execute this specific program? Does your team actually have the bandwidth to, to take it on, etc.? All right, I'd love to hear what you think. Did the guiding questions kind of help you think through 
whether to have a single versus multiple programs, uh, which program idea you should hone in on, which one you should focus on, etc. first or next if you're growing. I'd love to hear more about what you are working on, so share in the comments below. As I mentioned before, if you are in the process of starting a nonprofit or developing a sustainable fundraising plan, be sure to check out my website, foundertofulltime.com, or I have some online trainings there on those topics, as well as a new blog and some resources you can check check out too. I have a great newsletter where I send out tips and strategy and sometimes funding opportunities that I have linked below this video. So be sure to subscribe to that. Of course, you can opt out anytime you need. And finally, I have a group on Facebook called Change the World or Bust. We've got either at the time of filming this, um, well, we have almost 5,000 people. So maybe by the time you see this, we'll have over 5,000 people, which is super exciting from around the world, all making an impact in their own ways. And I hope that you can join us there. That's change the world or bust. Um, I hope to see you next time. Once again, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you later. Bye.